Gave down at the office. <laughs> Dagwood, it's three o'clock in the morning. Mm. Dagwood, go down and tell whoever it is to come back tomorrow. <laughs> Mom, Pop, somebody's ringing the doorbell. Uh, we know, children. Maybe it's a burglar. No, Cookie, no. I think you'll find your average burglar doesn't go around ringing doorbells in the middle of the night. Maybe it's a polite burglar. No, no, it couldn't be a burglar. We're not rich enough. Of course, it could be an amateur burglar who takes from the poor and gives to the rich. It's a burglar. Oh, well, Dagwood, then this is no time to put on a clean shirt. We're trying to find something to defend ourselves with. I did find it. I know. Dear? Here, take this. Like this. Hmm? Oh, no, Blondie, you don't use a nine iron on a burglar. That's the wrong club. <laughs> Here, Dad, take this. Thanks. It's a water pistol. Sure, Pop. You know what I know, but does he know? <laughs> okay, you kids, you stay in here now. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Oh, Blondie, here's the plan. You, you turn on the porch lights and we'll surprise them, huh? Okay, go ahead. Now, open the door. Come on. Stop squirting me. Oh, Mr. D, there's a, we thought you were a crook. I, I'm too tired to take offense at that remark. Gosh, I'm awful sorry, boss. I, I got carried away with the excitement. Well, it was either that or a nine iron. You'd use a nine iron on a burglar, you use a wedge. <laughs> Put that thing down. I'm cold. Children, you, you can go on back to bed now. Mr. Dithers is not a burglar. And how come he's sneaking around this time of night? It's pajamas. Oh, Alexander, that, that's too difficult a question at this time of night. Is it? Go, go on to bed. Guy, I wanted to see a real burglar. <laughs> come on, Cookie. Let's go upstairs. This is one of those grown-up hangs. <laughs> is, is anything wrong, Mr. Dithers, or, or do you always run around at night like that? No, you see, uh, Mrs. Dithers and I had a spirited discussion, a little difference of opinion, and... Uh, uh, she threw you out. <laughs> yes, yes, you might put it that way. So I, I thought to myself, where would I go at 3 o'clock in the morning dressed only in these pajamas? And it came to me like a bolt from the blue. One place. The house where the master's like my own dear son. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll get dressed and drive you over there. Uh, no, dear. He, he means here. Hmm? Mr. Ditters, you want to stay here? Uh, just till morning. I'm sure that Cora will come to her senses. Oh, <laughs> sure, sure she will. <laughs> sure she will. I just can't believe it. After all those years of marriage, even how rotten they were. Well, I, I mean that you and Mr. Dithers have come to a parting of the ways. What started the fight? I've forgotten. Oh, Mrs. Dithers, how sweet. To forgive and forget so soon. Who said anything about forgiving? <laughs> but you just said forget. You have no idea what it's like to live with a man who cracks his knuckles at the dinner table and, and then goes and sits in front of the TV set with that mechanical channel changer going click, 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 all around the dial. What was the fight all about? Uh, Cora didn't tell me. 
He must have done something wrong. Now, you can't believe that. I'm not the kind of man who... Pulls the newspapers apart and scatters them all over the floor. <laughs> Things off key in the shower. And there's a compulsive oven opener and pot seeker. You know that we lost two maids in the past three weeks because he wouldn't stay out of the kitchen. And... There's more? More? I haven't even started yet. <laughs> well, nobody's perfect. I should think he'd know better than to... Hang her wet stockings on a towel rack over my bedroom slippers? Have you ever gotten up in the middle of the night and found your hush puppy spilled with nylon drippings? Uh, not recently, no. Gosh, Mr. Dithers, I always thought of you as a happily married man. Well, I try not to burden people with my troubles, Dagwood, but... Nobody knows what I've been through. I think you're giving me sort of a rough idea. I just feel sorry for anyone who tries to live with that wretch. He belongs in a... Miserable little hotel room. <laughs> No one to talk to. Just a lonely old man staring at four bare walls. No. No, you can't do it. What did you say, my boy? I said you can't stay in a lonely old hotel room surrounded by four miserable walls. No. Mr. Dithers, you're coming home with me and you're going to stay there just as long as you like. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, dear boy. Thank you for your warm, dear nature. <laughs> is a wonderful thing, Cookie. It means you love someone and you want to live with them always. Are we married to Mr. Dithers? <laughs> of course not, Cookie. Mr. Dithers is married to Mrs. Dithers. Oh. Then how come he's living with us? <laughs> That's a very good question, Alexander. You didn't answer it. I know. But that doesn't keep it from being a very good question. <laughs> Blondie, why don't we have to go to bed at 7.30? It's the only place in the house where we have any privacy, and I want to talk to you about Mr. Dithers. Oh. Do we have to? Yes, dear, I'm sorry, but we do. Now, we are not married to Mr. Dithers, right? Right. But he is married to Mrs. Dithers, right? Right. And a husband's place is beside his wife, right? Right. Then, Mr. Dithers should be living at home with Mrs. Dithers, right? Right. And it's up to us to see that he does, right? Right. I'm glad we had this little talk, Dagwood. <laughs> what I can't understand is why you invited someone with all his bad habits to stay with us in the first place. He told me he was perfect. Huh? <laughs> Who? Who did that? I was, I was watching the favorite program. Well, I did, Mr. Dithers. Uh, you don't want to oversleep. It's bad for your insomnia. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true, I know. <laughs> well, Dagwood has something to say to you, don't you, dear? 
Right, yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead, dear. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I just want to say that... Is your room comfortable? No, it's very comfortable. I could stay here forever. Well, uh, Dagwood and I have been talking, Mr. Dithers, and... Well, we think it's time you went home. I am home, Blondie. Oh, oh, we mean your home, Mr. Dithers, with Mrs. Dithers. Oh, you should think of Mrs. Dithers suffering. Cora, suffering? Well, think what it's like without the comfort of your presence. Uh, silent, lonely, listening for your footsteps. That doesn't sound like Mrs. Dithers. <laughs> sound just like Mrs. Dithers. I mean, can't you just see her pining her heart out, hoping against hope that you'll come back to her? Blondie, you're right. Poor Cora, she she must be miserable without me. Gee, I don't think so. Just yesterday, I... <laughs> well, just waiting to welcome you with open arms. You're right, Blondie. You're right. I'll go right now. I'll get my things. Excuse me. <laughs> you're absolutely right, Blondie. But this has been like a second home to me. Well, goodbye, Mr. Dithers. Can't do it. I'm afraid. <laughs> Don't forget, Mrs. Dithers is waiting for you with open arms. That's the way she starts her karate chop. <laughs> Maybe if I had a little drink to, to relax me. All we have is cooking brandy. Oh, good. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll talk, and then she'll talk. You know how loving and tender say I am. Say when, Mrs. Dithers. Uh, you just can't win, that's Mr. all. Mr. Dithers, you were going to say when? Oh, oh yes, when? <laughs> <laughs> no, just to... treat a guest. I'll, I'll just take those signs, and, and I don't want to hear another word about this. Why don't you children clean up your rooms? Please, Mr. Dithers, you can live in Nome, New York, Savannah, anywhere, but not in our home. Blondie, we're a little early this evening. It's 6.30. I know. But dear, we've got to do something about Mr. Dithers. Right. I'm getting bed sores. The children are upset, and today Daisy bit him. 
Well, don't worry, honey. Daisy will be all right. I know. The vet gave her a shot. <laughs> but what worries me is that he never even mentions going home anymore. Yeah. Me too. Dagwood, if I trick Mr. Dithers into going home, would you be mad? I'd be furious. Why? Because if you know of a way to get rid of Mr. Dithers, you should have done it a long time ago. <laughs> Look. Now, if I talk to Mrs. Dithers and you talk to Mr. Dithers, we could... Well, how is the old grouch? Who, Mr. Dithers? Who else? Oh, he's fine. <laughs> I didn't think you'd put up with him this long. Oh, he's just been wonderful. As a matter of fact, he's been a real dear. <laughs> But, uh, Mrs. Dithers, I've been thinking, and I think you're right, I think. You've been thinking about what? Well, as long as you and Mr. Dithers aren't suited to one another, you should stop wasting your life on him. There are too many men in this world. Where? Where? Oh, everywhere. I never made any. Have you ever heard of Cupid Incorporated? Well, I like Cupid, but what are they incorporated for? <laughs> well, you see, it's an organization devoted to introducing eligible people to each other. Oh, but, Blondie, I'm not eligible. I'm married. Oh, well, then we'll have to forget it. I mean, if you're going to quibble over little details. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's just pretend you're looking for the perfect mate and see what happens. Me resort to a date bureau? No, Bumstead, I, I'm a happily married man. Not anymore, you're not. How dare you say that? Happily married men are all living at home with their wives. You're not. Well, that's a mere technicality. <laughs> Besides, it's the, way, it's the way I think of myself that counts. Feel that bad, do you? <laughs> oh, no. Mr. Dithers, suppose, not that you are, mind you, but just suppose you were looking for someone else. Why, a man like you, with your looks and talent, you could order any kind of date you desire. Uh, um, uh, Bumstead, uh, did you say uh, uh, any any kind of date? Sure. Sit down, sit down. Look, all you have to do is fill out this little form right here, see? Then they get all these beautiful girls and they fill out the same form. Then they throw them all into this giant computer. <laughs> and presto, out pops your perfect mate. <laughs> yeah. But since you're not interested, I guess I'll just tear this little form up here. I'll just tear yeah, it. Uh, don't, don't, don't be too impetuous, Jeff. I mean, you went to all the trouble of getting at. The least I can do is, is look at it. <laughs> Mr. Dithers, you're all heart. Hmm. Uh, your age is? A secret. Oh, well, we have to put down something. Shall I use my own judgment? Don't you dare. Put down 35. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Dithers, that's ridiculous. You're right. Make that 32. <laughs> so let's be ridiculous. You would be willing to meet a person as young as... 18. 18. What you do is your business. I don't want to go out with anyone younger than 18. Hmm. Ah, you would be willing to meet a person as old as... Uh, 24. <laughs> no, make that 25. Lots to be said for older women. <laughs> Appearance. Striking. Um, occupation group. We have to check one. Uh, professional, business, skilled, student, homemaker. Right in swinger. <laughs> well, they mean business. Well, so do I. <laughs> now we have to determine your attitudes toward life. Fire away. All right. Do you lose your temper easily? Sonny Julius? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> What are you doing, Bumstead? Waiting for lightning to strike. <laughs> Cut that out. And just one more question. Uh, well, what's your favorite sport? A rich man. <laughs> are your feelings easily hurt by criticism from others? What's to criticize? <clears throat> I think we'll just pass over that one. Just cross it out all together. <clears throat> all right. Next question. What do you consider to be your worst fault? Modesty. <laughs> oh, now, here's a good one. What well-known person do you consider most like yourself? Mm, Napoleon. <laughs> Napoleon? Well, not really, but I'm too modest to put down the real me. <laughs> James Bond. Nice. Good night. Good night, boss. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Did you 
you get Mr. Dither's application filled out? Yeah, right here. But I, I don't know what good it's going to do because, boy, that man cheats. Oh, and so does Mrs. Dither's. He'd think I was talking to Mia Farrell. It's a good thing we aren't really going to send those applications in. <laughs> We're not going to send them in? Oh, of course not. Mrs. Dither's would get somebody like Elvis Presley. Oh. <laughs> and, and if Mr. Dither's got that James Bond kind of girl he's looking for, he'd get instant heart failure. <laughs> You heard from Cupid Incorporated? Mm -hmm. The computer has found a perfect match for you. Oh, it's my dream prince. Oh, well, they don't tell you that. But, but you do have a date to meet him this Saturday night in the Hawaiian room of the Cheryl Hotel. Well, how will I know him? Oh, he'll know you. See, and, and if he likes your, your, your looks, well, then he'll introduce himself. Um, this Saturday night? Mm, at 8 o'clock. Oh, I wasn't expecting it so soon. I don't know whether I could be ready in time. Today is only Tuesday. Good morning, boss. You sent for me? Of course I did. Why haven't you heard from Cupid Incorporated? I did hear. Are there any kind of reliable concern? They... <laughs> what did you say? I just heard from them. Oh, uh, they, 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 they sent pictures. No, no, no. But they did find you your perfect date. <laughs> did they describe the luscious creature? She probably has. Uh, no, well, you've been described to her. Yeah. And if she decides she wants to meet you, well, she picks you up, mm. introduces herself. This Saturday night at 8 o'clock in the lobby of the Cheryl Hotel. Uh, yeah, but how will she recognize me? Well, she has your description from the form you filled out there. And, oh, yeah, you're supposed to wear a big white carnation right, right there. White carnation? Uh -huh. <laughs> Mr. Ditters, if you don't come out from behind that post, she won't see you. No, no, you, you, you won't leave me, will you, Dad? No, not, not till she gets here. Thank you. I'm so nervous, I can hardly stand it. How do I look? Uh, oh, you look just like yourself. How sweet of you to say that. But I'm so nervous. How do I look? Huh? Well, I, you look like a cross between James Bond and Napoleon. Oh, just the... <laughs> <laughs> what time is it now? 8.29 and a half. He's not coming. He could have been mistaken about the time. No, I know it. He took one look at me and he ran. Oh, nonsense. He'd be too polite to run. I mean... I've got 8.30. What, what, what time have you got? 8.30. She's not coming. No, no, Dagwood. She's, she's just not coming. That's now, Mr. Jitters, it's been so many years since you've had a date, you forget how women are. They always keep you waiting. <laughs> Let's go, Blondie. Mrs. Dithers, we might miss him. We didn't miss him. We just didn't like what he saw. Let's face it. Julius Dithers is the only man in the world for me. And now it's too late. Come on, Dagwood. Let's go. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. We'll just, we'll just stay here just a little longer. She'll be here, I promise you. No, my, my dream girl rejected me. No, oh, I was a fool at my age. Mrs. Dither's the only woman for me, and like a sap, I, I walked out on her. Julius! Cora! Oh, I've never been so glad to see anyone in my whole life. Oh, you took the words right out of my heart. Pussycat, I love you. I love you too, Poopsie. <laughs> Will you promise never to call me Pussycat? If you promise never to call me Poopsie. <laughs> Yeah, I know, honey. But today's a great day. I want Daisy to be happy, too. She's happy. She got her chair in the living room back. <laughs> Boy, it certainly is a pleasure eating such a delicious breakfast surrounded by so many smiling faces. Bumstead faces. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again, young lady. Shall I uh, walk you to the door? Hmm? Do I have to go somewhere? Well, to work. Oh, work. I'm late for work. Oh, yeah, I got it. Stay where you are, gang. Finish your breakfast. See you tonight. Bye, Daddy. <coughs> Bye. Doug, <coughs> uh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> They don't want us to know how happy we are that Mr. Dithers left. Yeah, I know. 
You know something, Cookie? I've been thinking, and there must be a lot more to mirrors than we know. Why? Anything that would make Mrs. Dithers happy to live with Mr. Dithers must be a real blockbuster. <laughs>